Hi and welcome to the first video of the Advanced Topics for Project Managers track. In this video, we'll explore resource allocation reporting. Well, let's start by talking about the resource planning. Well, PPL calculates a resource's capacity by taking into account the standard working hours, working days and public holidays. It then compares this with the time an employee is expected to work on tasks they are assigned to. So the results of all these calculations then provides you with an overview of which resources are working over or under capacity. Now the resource planning module of PPO uses information from the system configuration, the employees entity, projects entity and tasks entity to determine the resource capacity and the extent to which a resource is being utilized. Now I'm going to show you those settings on the employees entity first. So I'm going to click on this employees menu item and from the employee list I'm going to click on Jane Branch. Now within the employee view page for Jane Branch there is this planning information section. All these fields within this section relate to the resource capacity planning. The first field is this including capacity field. Well, this field indicates whether the employee should be taken into account for resource planning. Now, users may want your administrative or temporary staff to be excluded from resource planning calculations. So, this can be done by making the including capacity field false or simply unchecking it for this employee's record. The next field is the standard hours. Now, this field allows the user to capture an exception to the standard hours captured in the system configuration. Now, for example, if this employee works four hours a day instead of eight, which is the default one as set them in the system configuration, the four hours can be captured here on the employee's record. If it's zero like now, people will use the standard hours as in the system configuration. The last fields relate to the charge out rates. Now PPO includes a cost component to resource planning. So this cost component allows users to specify a basic or a normal charge out rate for the employees as well as two alternative charge out rates. The next entity that relates to the resource planning is the project entity. So I'm going to click on this projects menu item and from the project list just click on any of these projects. Within the project view page for this project, you will notice if you scroll down this field here that says rate to use. Now users can define per project which charge out rate should be used for all the employees working on the project. This setting is captured here in this rate to use field. If the standard charge out rate is selected as the rate to use, people will use the standard charge out rate in all resource cost calculations for each employee working on the project. Another entity that relates to our resource planning is the task entity. So I'm going to use my quick page locator and access the tasks. Now from the task list, I'm just going to click on any of these tasks. So on the task view page, you will also see this planning information section. Now there are three fields that relate to our resource planning. The first one is this plan duration in days, which is the time that the task will take to complete from the day it is planned to start until the day it is planned to end. The value provided is in days but it will be converted to hours based on the specified standard hours for the employee. The next field is the allocation percentage. Now even though a task duration may be for example 5 days, it does not necessarily mean the responsible person will spend all their working hours and effort on this one particular task. So the allocation percentage field shows the amount of the resources total time that will be devoted to the task. So this can also be shown and imported from Microsoft Project. The next field is the generate planning field. Now the generate planning field indicates where the task must be taken into account for resource planning. So it's assumed that tasks that are not assigned to any of the employees will not be taken into account for planning calculations. Which is why task types like your project task or summary task or milestones or deliverables will by default not show as true or checked on this generate planning field. So tasks where the task type is task, they will by default show true or yes or checked on the generate planning field. This generate planning field will also show when you import your project schedules. So now that we've shown you the employee entity, project entity and task entity, let's start by showing you some reports and dashboards that are available on the planning. Now click on this dashboards menu item 
and from the dashboard drop down list I'm going to select this planning dashboard by employee. I'm going to select the period, you can select any period, I'm going to look at all the employees and I'm going to group it by employee. And once I'm happy with my selection, click on the dashboard view icon. Now the planning dashboard by employee displays a monthly view of the capacity and the planning information from an employee's perspective. Now the dashboard calculates the working days for the selected month and excludes public holidays that have been captured in PPO. For example, a standard working month may have 20 working days. On the employee side, there are also the number of data fields that we already showed you that are applicable on these dashboards as well. So if I look at something like the total hours capacity and the available hours, it's calculated as follows. And let's use this simple example. So if I have 10 employees that are included in my capacity and all of them work the standard working hours, which is currently set to 8 hours, and they all work for a total of a month, then the total hours capacity would be 10 employees times 8 hours a day times 20 working days, which is 1,600. So that's just an example I use, but now you know how this total hours capacity is calculated. The available hours is then calculated by taking the total hours capacity minus your planned hours. So the planned hours is the time planned by the users of PPO on those tasks and it's calculated by using the start and end dates of the task, as well as that percentage allocation and the responsible resource. You will also notice that you can hover over these different measures and the graph on the right hand side will change based on your selection. So if I want to look at this graph by available hours, I can simply click on this measure and you'll see the graph is now shown based on the measure that you selected. Here at the bottom, you will then see all the employees that form part of your resource planning and what their capacity is. Employees that have this grey indicator mean that they are not forming part of your resource capacity and you cannot plan them on tasks. People that are over allocated are shown in red. Green means I still have capacity. Amber means I'm nearing the capacity that is available. I'm going to now look at the planning dashboard by project. So I'm going to close here and select the planning dashboard by project. So I'm going to also now look at the month of May and group it by something like face. Look at all the projects and then click on the dashboard view icon. I can now see that there are two employees planned on projects that are currently in the planning phase. So if I wanted to understand who those people are, I could then click on this planning phase. It drills one step further and I can see the two projects and there I can see that there are two people or two employees planned on that project. So if I want to see who they are, I could select this project and it then opens that weekly resource allocation report where I can then see who has available hours and who is working which days or which weeks on this particular project. I'm going to close these reports and I want to show you the project costing reports. So I'm going to click on the reports menu item, select the planning entity and then select this project costing report. I'm going to look at it for the month of May again at all projects and all employees and then click on my report view icon. You will then see the amount of hours that people are planned here and the charge out rate that is used and how much they are costing me from a resource point of view just to work on these projects. Now what will happen if the charge out rates of that employee change? Well this project costing report will then also show the updated information. So if the charge out rate changes you would have to access the employees entity, select that specific employee and then update their charge out rates. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you learned a lot about resource allocation reporting. Learn more about PPO today by visiting us at projectportfoliooffice.com. PPO, your award-winning project management solution.